Start. Started. Okay. Shot. All right. Um, question. Um, is Gazel Shaina a thing? Gazel Shaina, that's a famous question. Gazel Shaina, people assume that if somebody's sleeping and you wake him up, so you stole his sleep. And uh, that, is that considered a real thing of stealing sleep? So there's no real early source for the concept of Gazel Shaina. It's a new thing. It comes from the Bali Hamusa. And the la last generation, the Paiskim have spoken about it and they have discussed it and they have uh, basically said that it's more a concept of Aves Yisrael, of Midas Tevis, but the concept of stealing doesn't really apply. There is a concept where it says when someone, in the Gemara story, somebody said Shalom Aleichem and someone didn't respond and he said, you're stealing from him. So you see the term stealing can be used for other things as well, but as a thing that you have to owe it now and pay it back, that obviously doesn't exist as a real thing. But of course, with that regular Midas Tevis and that you shouldn't be bothering other people. Question, what is the source of Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy? Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy has no source in the Gemara and Chazal as far as we know. The source of Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy comes from the late Rishonim, from the Rosh. It seems that the Rosh, that's the father of the tour, he's the first one that mentioned that whenever he would hear Hashem's name, he would say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy. To point something out important, that when you're hearing a bracha, that you're meant to be Yitzah from that bracha, you're not supposed to answer Baruch Hu Baruch Shmoy. And that's why, for example, by Tkiyah Shoifer, when the Tkiyah makes the bracha, so you're not supposed to say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmei. He says Baruch Ato Hashem. You're not supposed to say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmei when he says Al Kenim Al Chayil Ma'ashir Kedesh Shalom Sitzvunu Mishmer Akel Shoifer. That's what the actual nusach is. Baruch Ato Hashem Al Kenu. It's done with Dafke together, so people shouldn't say Baruch Hu Baruch Shmei. It's also negaya is that when you're getting an aliyah for the Torah on Shabbos or the weekday. So one of the ways we get our maya brachas, hundred brachas a day on Shabbos, is by hearing the, about the people getting aliyahs. So when you say baruchu baruch shmei to their aliyahs, you're not being, getting that bracha for yourself. So ideally, those kind of brachas, you should, you should not be saying baruchu baruch shmei, you should only be saying baruchu baruch shmei by, uh, by bracha that you're not being geitz. Wait, is this all the life that you're not As far as I know, yeah. Only I mean, I'm not a loch alamaisa. You can be geitz your maya brachas other ways. Only on Shabbos or also Monday? I, I think also Monday and Thursday, but I can't tell you for sure. I'm not saying Allah Chalamaisa. I mentioned this on numerous times. Q&A is for entertainment purposes only. This entertainment is that it's, uh, as far as I know, you don't make Baruch Hu Baruch you want to be Yitz on the bro. Question, what is the proper way to learn Gemara? The way to learn it, how many times to review, etc. This is the one of the biggest topics that Baruch like to talk about. When I was in 770, Arach Rusa that... Uh, we learned together, and he told me, I just want to learn. I don't want to talk anything about how to learn. He said, because in my yeshiva life, I spend at least half of my time, all my starting, speaking about what's the way, best way of learning. And I realized now that was a complete waste of time. I just got to learn, and that's it. So there is a lot what to talk about. There's many different shittas in the right way of learning. There's different drachim. There's the derach of the Pedesh of the, of the, of the Litvish, and then it's that itself, there's different drachim. So there isn't really one cloud. The best place to look, obviously, is Kuntra Seitzachayim from the Rebbe Rashab. There he describes the basic way of learning Le'ion. But usually when it comes to learning, there's really many, many different drachim. Another detail of the question was, how many times do you have to review how many times do you have to review what you learn? And that also, there's no cloud. There's no rule in that. There's a general rule that a person is supposed to review. But how much times to review, it doesn't clearly say. There is a tradition that I've heard many times, and that is that there, every daf and chas, you're going to see there's four lines of Rashi on top of the, on top of the Gemara. And the word is that it's a remez. It's a remez. It's a remez that every daf gemara you're supposed to review four times. That's a famous word that I heard. My teacher told me that it doesn't mean that. It's a, the word is wrong. The word is not that you have to review it four times. The word is after you learn it four times, you have to start reviewing it. So his word was that until you learn something four times, you don't really understand it properly, which is the same idea that reviewing helps you make you understand it better. But uh, ideally, review means just going over what you already know, not adding a higher level of understanding. So there's no rules. We have the system we have over here with the Chazara system, 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and so on. Uh, we've had Bochum that after they left um, Postville, they told me they kept up the system and they tweaked it to their own needs. 
One bracha told me he did, do every, he did every daf twice and every ten he did a chazara, and that was it. Some guys do a different style, but so it's a, everyone really does what works for them. There's no klal in it. There is an al Rabbi Shulchan Aruch a discussion about chazaring every month. It's a very interesting seder, which nobody does. I don't know why, but the seder is that every month you review whatever you learned. So the way he describes it is, imagine you learn for 30 days new material. So I have 30 days worth of new material. On day 31, I don't learn new material. On day 31, I start reviewing my past material of 30 days. Now usually when you review, it takes you quicker. So what took you 30 days the first time, will take you the second time, 20 days, 18 days, 15 days. So let's say it takes you 15 days, so review for 15 days. And then the next 15 days, you learn new material. And then the third month, you review again. So now what you did the first time in 15 days will now be probably 10 days, and the second 15 days will be maybe 10 days, and eight, whatever the numbers are, and slowly. And he says, eventually, you might get to the point that you're only going to be able to review every 30 days. You won't have nothing new to learn. So that's fine. You also have every 30 days you have to review. That's what it says in Al-Tarebbe, as far as I know, nobody does that. Um, I'm not sure why. It may be it applied in those times, and everything was Baal Peh. Today, everything is inside, which that makes everything, the whole reviewing thing, not as strict as it used to be, because we have all the Svarim inside today, so we assume that we can always go back and find it inside. But again, there is no cloud. At the same time, it's clear that everyone has to have a system of reviewing, of hazarding, whether it's once a year, once a month, whatever the system that works best for you. If the chazan gets to a kaddish, should I stop davening until it's done? When the chazan gets to a kaddish, so ideally when the chazan says kaddish, you're meant to listen to the chazan and answer amen and not speak. So it's clear that speaking stamazoy is forbidden. You cannot speak in the middle of kaddish. However, when it comes to davening, so it seems like there's more room to be lenient, especially if you're trying to daven to catch up to the minion, or if you're davening in a different minion, you're not part of this minion, or if you're basically the same idea, you're learning and you're saying Tehillim and things like that. So it seems like the accepted minig is, the accepted psak is, that you're allowed to continue davening throughout Kaddish, but of course you have to stop every time for the Kaddish and try to think what you're saying. Can you say Amen in, in the middle of a puzzle? There's a Mishnah Brura in Hilchas Rishchidosh where he says yes. And that seems to be the source that you're allowed to. But the Rebbe Rashab, it says when he went on, on, on Erev Pesach, he would stop and he would uh, he went to the matzah bakery and he would say halal, kapitlach of halal, while he was supervising what was going on. And he would sometimes stop and it says even in the middle of a kapitl, he would stop to people to instruct something that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't his liking. Ula yesh ledayik, that it was only a middle of a kapitol, not a middle of a pasuk. So that could be a day that stamazai, the pastor stamazai in the pasuk, you can. But for all the pastors, you're allowed to. And even in Halach, it discusses a um, person's davening, so a person could stop for his inyan in the middle of a pasuk also. Even if it has Hashem's name. If it's finishing an inyan, so if the inyan the pasuk finishes, you can stop over there. That seems to be the psalm. If you wear Shimusha Rabbe and Raivid, what do you do on Rosh Chedesh when you take off your tefillin earlier? You saw, you understand the question? Huh? Maybe you understand the question? I think so. It's something called Shimusha Rabbe and Raivid. We all put on Rashi and Abed Thomas tefillin. There's another two pairs of tefillin called Shimusha Rabbe and Raivid. Shimusha Rabbe and Raivid is not a complete set of tefillin, it's only Shorosh. I forget, but one of them goes with the Shalyad of Rashi, and one goes with the Shalyad of Rabbeinu Tam. I don't remember which is which, but one that's the, you say basically the way that those that put on those the, those peers, they take off the Shalrosh of Rashi, and then they put the Shalrosh of one of these two, and then they wear that and say something with that. Then they take off Shalyad and Shalrosh and put on Rabbeinu Tam, and then take off the Shalrosh of Rabbeinu Tam and put on the Shalrosh of the other one. So famously, the Rebbe put on four pairs of film. The Rebbe says in a sicha that it's something which he was afraid to do on his own. He says you have to have a very holy, you have to be holy for that. The Rebbe says the big siddim, a bit of the masmid, the Yishgarari, they would do it. But the Rebbe Kivyochel says about himself, he wasn't ready for it. Until the Friedrich Rebbe bought him the extra pairs and he put it on. You know that the Vilna Goyen didn't put on a Bein Thomas film. The Vilna Goyen said that if you're going to be chayshish to all the opinions that are out there, you have to put on over 60 pairs of film to be chayshish to every shita. So therefore, just go by Rashi and that's it. But I'll pick up all, I'll pick see this. I mean, the Vilna Goyen was a big makubal, but uh, nevertheless, he didn't. But I'll pick up all, there's a nyan to be mamshech, the amshech, and she through and Rabbi Nathan, and she Musharaba and Raiva. So, the Bachar's question is, those that do it. Now, the reason why it's, uh, some people are smirking is because 
There are today people that are very, very strong Meshachistan, what they call Meshachistan, living in Mashiach's times, and therefore they wear four pairs of tefillin. Because the Rebbe mentioned that when Mashiach comes, we're all going to be holy, and we're going to start wearing four pairs of tefillin. So they assume, okay, so we're Mashiach is here already, so we have, we're ready to put on four pairs of tefillin. Seems to be a bit odd. It seems to be not just an acceptable uh, practice. Most people do not do so. But there are such people that are on the feel that they're holy enough to do that. And Mamela, they're the ones probably asking. Those people probably know what they have to do because they're so holy. But the other Bachim are wondering what do those holy people do? On Rishchidosh. So, but pastors, it seems like if the minion is ready to wait for them, they can do everything in between. Uh, when everyone has Rabbeinu Tam, they'll do the other things. The minion is not ready to wait for them, so then they'll do it after davening. By the Rebbe, it seems like the Rebbe did it all between right, between um, uh, the, between Shir Shalyoyim with the, and, and Musaf, because when the Rebbe went upstairs for Rabbi Tam, it seems it took the Rebbe like, quite a while, 15, 20 minutes. Rabbi Tam doesn't take that long, so that's why there's a strong story to say the Rebbe did it all in between, but I don't know that for, for, for a fact. Yes. Um, so it says in in Hayim Yoyim the Seder they would say they would learn Chumash with one and learn Mishnayis in the other one. It's like a system what they would do, but really it's not connected to the even Rabbi Tam. An Indian you could be Rabbi Tam and not say anything. You just put, it's about putting on the tefillin. It's not about what you're saying with it. But there, there is a minute brought down in Hayim Yoyim what's supposed to be done. What'd you say? That particular Hayyam Yayim or Bechlau. Hayyam Yayim, everything in the Rebbe gives for us is a lesson to us. What exactly do we learn from that Hayyam Yayim? You can teach, yeah, the Rebbe is saying there's a time that we're going to have to do. We have to know what we have to do. Or you can say the Rebbe is telling us what the greater people do. Question Should you look inside a Siddur even when something is distracting you, or should you close your eyes? So, it seems the Bracha is asking that he wants to look inside a, a Siddur, but if he keeps his eyes open, when he's looking inside the Siddur, he's getting distracted. So therefore, he wants to know, could he close his eyes? In general, the Rebbe strongly encouraged looking inside the Siddur. Friedrich Rebbe and the Rebbe, the Rebbe spoke about it a few times in letters as well. The Rebbe also mentioned that if a person has a hard time focusing, at least have the Siddur open in front of you. So here, in that, from that letter, it's Mashmah, the Rebbe is addressing the fact that a person could seemingly dive in better without looking inside. But the Rebbe says, and, st and, and, and still it's better for him to have the Siddur open. So there isn't like a call, it must be one way or the other way. It doesn't must be inside, must be outside. But ideally, you should be looking inside. But if you know practically for you, that when you close your eyes, you'll be able to focus better, then it's fine. That seems to be the, the pshat. At the same time, you should have your Siddur open. It's an ACS, it's an Indian, it's Guli to have the Siddur open in front of you. I think that's what the Bacher's question was. If I got it if I'm wrong, then you can always write again. Do bald people use shampoo or body wash for their head? <laughs> Only 10 seconds later. Um, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. In the meantime, it's still shampoo. When it changes, I'll let you know. Do you have to be tucked in your shirt inside your pants? Yes. So there's a famous story. There's a famous story they say about they say it about Nagel from Khan Heights. There's a famous uh, uh, what's his first name? Nachman Nagel, not Nachman, Nachman's the son. I got his first name. I think Martha Nagel. Kids are Nagel from Khan Heights. He's in 770 for the past 50 years. He's busy over there the whole time. He has his room upstairs in 770. And they, he came from an Atfalabavish background. And this is the way the story goes. And he came from his father's Ayaka, a very proper kind of person. And uh, he came, his, his son became a Labavitcher and he started becoming uh, what we call a Shloch with his shirt untucked. And his father came to the Rebbe, the way the story goes, and complained to the Rebbe, how you talking? I sent my son over here and you guys are all Shlochs over here. So the story goes that the Rebbe stood up and opened his kapot and said, he didn't learn it from me, because the Rebbe shirt was tucked in at the time. That's how the story goes. The Chlal, a chosid, has to be a Masuda. What's considered a Masuda? A Masuda is in many areas, in all areas of life, one is meant to be a Masuda. 
Someone that focuses on Seder only in his Levushim uh, and doesn't focus on an inner Seder is missing the point. It's a lot more important than you must Seder with your time, with your focus, with your learning. That's the most important thing. You should be a Masudr also in your clothing as well. And the really great Chesidim, each of the Masmer, they say about him, you could never find a speck of dust on his clothing. Very Masudr, very proper, always the pastors tucked in. The real great Chesidim were Masudr and everything through and through. A person is, has to, so ideally, yes, a bracher is meant to be tucked in, a bracher is meant to be a Masudr. Lepoyal, most Lubavitch Chesidim, I shouldn't say most, but many, many Lubavitch Chesidim never care about these things because they felt that when you're getting into being tucked in, you're focusing on the Vushim and Chitzainiyas, and you're not focusing on the real thing you should be focusing on. So it's a, it's a gray area, that approach, that the uh, Vushim are not important, it's a gray area. The pastors, black and white, the simple answer should be, yes, one is meant to be tucked in. However, the, the, there is a lot of room to be more lenient about it and not necessarily push for it. Yeah. I never saw such a letter. It's possible. It's bechlal to be mesuder. That's for sure. This is the story that I heard about Nagel. I don't. I didn't hear any other story. The pastors. Yeah, I think in the famous picture from the from the keel, I think it's not tucked in over there. So whatever. But that's how the story goes. Uh, this story goes in the as in the So he kapata. He opened up his kapata. That's how the story goes. If it's, I don't know if it's true. It's Nagel's around. You can ask him if he heard it from his father or not. But that's how I heard the story. I think I once asked him, and I think he said, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I heard the story not from him, that's for sure. But Khalifin, that's regarding that. Then there's another element of going on Miftzoyim, and you go on Miftzoyim, over here it makes more sense to be tucked in, because you're going on Miftzoyim, and the veld, definitely someone that's not tucked in, looks more like he's not uh, put together, and by many of the people they go do Miftzoyim with, they respect more a person that's a Mesudar, and therefore they're going to properly um, uh, respond better if you're tucked in. So that oh, seems to be... Huh? I, I, story I, I, with the tie, the famous story everybody knows. Yeah, but that story tells you that only if the Rebbe comes in a dream, you wear a tie. Otherwise, you don't wear a tie. I'll let us have tucked in also. What was the story with the tie? Okay. Lady oh, Bamgarten has a famous oh. story yeah. uh, that he was once, uh, he had two, he has a, he's the first mitzvah tank, that's Kavua. So there's two Bachrim and a Bachrim, I forget how the story, how to say it, but basically this Bachrim had a, on his Uftsoy rule, the person that never wanted to put on film. And one week, this Bachrim comes to the, you know the story? I should say it right there. So one week, he's on his route, and one of these guys in Manhattan on the streets is selling ties, and he goes to the Bachrim, you want to buy a tie? Bachrim's not interested. No, good, very good price, $10. I don't pay that. He made him crazy. He made it on to a dollar. Bachrim's mom is very cheap. And the Bachrim felt so bad, the guy's mom is harassing him. So Bachrim, fine, I'll put it on, make you do your favor. So he put on the tie, and uh, that was it. And he goes on his route, and he goes to this guy that he went to every week for a very long time. And this guy finally says, I said, I'm willing to agree to put on to him. So I don't know if, the, if the, the, this person told the Bachrim himself, or he told it to Levi Bamgart, and that someone asked him, like, what made you change your mind? So this, this person said that I had a dream last night, and a holy man, the Rebbe, came to him and said, I'm sending you people every week to put on film. How come you're not putting on film? So he told the Rebbe, these people come, they're so not put together, they don't even wear a tie. So because of that, the Rebbe said, okay, I'll send them with a tie, something like, I don't know if the Rebbe said, you know, send them with a tie, or the dream ended there. Lepoyo, Lepoyo, uh, the, that, that ended up happening, he ended up getting a tie, so. I don't think so. I don't so think it's after giving it Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the, it, it happened. Again, the pastors, pastors Bachem don't wear ties. When American Shlichus Bachem used to wear ties, that was proper. So it really uh, it depends a lot on the, on the place that you're going in today's day and age and today's vibes. Some places you'll be less accepted when your shirt stuffed in and wearing a tie and look at you like you're whatever. So it really depends. But even clearly, a bachar has to be a masudr, which with a pashas includes in being tucked in. That's a pashas the way it's supposed to be. Um, but again, you can't really say as a klal because many chsidim, like I said, never care about such things. Is it okay to eat your esrog? Um, on sukkis, you cannot eat your esrog because on sukkis, Esrig is muktza, it's designated for the mitzvah. After sukkahs, not only is it okay, but there's many people that there's a skula to eat the esrig. Some people wait until two, two bishvat, chamisha, two bishvat, to eat it then. A lot of skulas are involved, so, and our chabad, I don't think there's an official minute to eat the esrig. Many people make jam out of it. They claim it's a skula for different things, for shaduchim, for other things, for having children, but uh, it's not an official chabad thing, yes or no, as far as I know.
Is a person allowed to change his Hasidus? A person is a... Manu, you want the question? A person is visionist, can he become Baba? A person is a Satmer, can he become uh, Bells? A <laughs> person is uh, anything like that, yes? Oh, that's where the question is coming from. I don't know. If there's a Chshash of pesticide, then I guess that's a different child. Then if you know there's pesticides, then it can't be... I don't know, I didn't think about that. I told me to the Asik itself. Um, I think the pale everyone still uses it today, so people still make they make it into jam and stuff like that. So I guess it can be. It's not. It's, it's dangerous. It's, it's poison. Yeah, I I don't know the answer. I didn't. I, I prepared the question. I didn't have that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, but usually when they make it on regular food grade things, they don't put such a high dosage that can be dangerous. Of course, apples, oranges have it, but the dark class not an issue. And since it's regular, most people do not eat. So he's, the svarta would be that they put a higher dose of pesticide that maybe it was a problem. I'm not familiar. So the question is about changing the Hasidus. So Bechlal, when it comes to Nat Chabad, all the other Hasidus, their differences are very, very external. There's very few um, differences in Nusach and Minhagim. There are, there are, every Hasidus has some, some unique Minhagim, but it doesn't mamish overtake your life. To become a Labavish or Chassid, a Chabad Chassid, to be through and through a Chabad Chassid, it's really going to take over your life because there's many, many Minagum we have from morning to evening, from what you learn, from what you eat, from all these different things that are out there. So really, it's a, it's a lot bigger of a change. So, huh? so everything else, I don't see an issue if a person wants to change from one style Bekecha to another Bekecha or from a Shreimel to a Spadik. I don't think those things are a problem at all. And if he wants to visit one tzaddik instead of another tzaddik, I don't think that's an issue at all. At all. When you want to change minhagim, so that gets complicated. In general, there's, there's a din of atardas nadarim, so certain minhagim that a person does, if he wants to change them, he might have to do atardas nadarim. So let's say, let's say someone that's a not labavisher and sleeps in the sukkah. He comes to labavisher and he, just, he wants to stop sleeping in the sukkah per hour minute. The Chayra, I would say, he has to make a Taurus Nedorim. He might get a heter from a Rav to remain sleeping in the sukkah. If he wants to, such a thing, but Pashtus, he has to make a Taurus Nedorim. And so to other kind of minhagim like that, if a person changes their minute. Um, when it comes to changing Nusach of davening, so then it's already in the Paiskim discuss regarding changing from Nusach Ashkenaz to Svarad is okay. From Svarad to Ashkenaz, not, not okay. From Svarad to Arizal is okay, and otherwise not. So that's the Dere cloud the, the rules. Going to our pay the shirtish? Just going to the tish as what? As for entertainment purposes? So mitzad min chabad, I don't think there's an issue. Just like the Zlabavichas that go to baseball games, they can go to our pay the shirtish. I don't think it's different. But Rabbi El Khan was once he used to give a shir in in the Ocean Parkway. That was the where Labavich Yeshiva was. And what they call Khaivave. And one night there was a some kind of Pedish Tzad that came from out of town and it was there a few blocks away, he was making a tish. So a lot of the Bachim skipped Seder and they went to check it out. And Abiel got very upset. And Abiel was very mad that they're, instead of learning Siddhis, they're going to watch the Pedish Tish. Now, if someone that doesn't know Abiel might think that maybe Abiel was personally insulted that they skipped the shear. But if you know Abiel, that wasn't Shaykhtim, he wasn't Shaykhtim personally insulted. He, was, he, was, he felt it was a wrong thing to do. A real Siddhis Shabbat should not be wasting his time on anything besides Limud Siddhis and Dark Siddhis, and therefore. Achsidah Shabbacher never is out of Seder. All of your time is dedicated to do what the Rebbe wants of you. So you is out of Seder. Huh? You if you need to have an outlet, then that's your outlet. It'll make you feel better. Then maybe. That could be. They have to speak to your Mashbiyah and tell your Mashbiyah, listen, I need an outlet. And I'm going to see this Pradesh of Tzadik. It'll be inspire me. So then uh, then maybe you can do that. Yes. That's the, not the Achrayis of you as a Bokhrim. That maybe Anhala can decide that and send a, a bus of Bokhrim. If they, Anhala says that, sends a bus of Bokhrim to Achrayis, uh, a Mesiba of Chafal of Kistel in Williamsburg, then maybe that just a Svari should go along with it. But uh, on your own, that's not your Cheshman that you should be making. There's a story about the. In, in, yeah? I personally don't know. There are such things, but very, very rare. Most, most, mostly it's the other way around. You probably know such people. 
but uh, very very rare. It happens, but it's very rare. Percentage wise, a lot less. You know, so in in Lubavitch so today we make fun of Chassidim and Misnagdim, but in Lubavitch, Lubavitch, one of the big uh, rivals for Lubavitch, so to speak, was Koydenov. Koydenov of Chassidus was another uh, Chassidus which Lubavitch is would constantly make fun of, and for Shetzach, they would make fun of us. So the story goes that one time a Lubavitcher married a Koydenover. And the Shver, the Koydenover, was trying to convince him to come to visit the Tish of the Koydenover Rebbe. And the Lubavitcher was not interested, but Shomai finished, and the Koydenover was begging him, begging and begging, and he said, finally, I'll come one time, but that's it, you'll leave me alone after that one time. So the Shver was so excited, as the son of Edom is going to come to visit the Tish, and they come to the Tish, and the Shver is Mamish Basmakovitz, uh, he's in Gan Eden, the Rebbe is giving his Zemira, uh, Shiris, whatever is happening, and his son in law is uh, sitting over there. After the tish is over, the shver's mama feels like, oh, this was such a big isaidus. And he asked the son of no, no, what do you say about the tish? So he said, everything was very nice. His midas were nice, and the food was very nice. It's one question who is the guy with the white beard sitting up in the front of it? So that's how the chsidim looked at tish and of other people. Have you ever been to a tish? Huh? Have I ever been to a not Labavitch a tish? A tish of a Perdish Rebbe? I think Shmuel Reinhold was once doing something and I passed by. <laughs> um, not, not more than that. What's the difference between Lubavitch and other types of Shechita? Okay, so... What? Skip it. Um, there's no real concept of Lubavitch and Shechita. You should understand that Lubavitch and Shechita, the term Lubavitch and Shechita is almost never brought down anywhere from Rabbi Seinu Nesiyeinu. The famous, famous source is a Yechidus with Rabbi Yitzchak Handel, the Rav of Montreal, where the Rebbe officially told him something about, about uh, Lubavitch and Shechita, about the Lubavitch and Shechita means that the Rebbe might take responsibility for it, so the Shechitim have to learn Hasidus and all that. That's uh, something which is a pri private Yechidus, which has different versions of what exactly was said. Um, there are cases, there are two, two or three other places, instances, where there is reference to such a concept that if it's a that it has to be top-notch. But really, when it comes to Shechita, so for the most part, the actual shechting and the checking and the, the knives, for the most part, it's pretty much the same across the board. Everybody, especially today's day and age, requires the same chumras and the same high levels. So what is it all about? It's all about having a chsidah sheshchita. Are you sure? Okay, I think I said one of your questions I answered already. Um, having a chsidah sheshchita. Chsidah sheshchita is a very famous concept. The Tzemach Tzedek famous is a famous story where the Tzemach Tzedek, in his time, so there was a lot of fights in many, many villages about who should be the leaders of the community. Many small communities couldn't provide for two complete chassidim and misnagdim. So they, they came up with a pshore, the Tzemach Tzedek offered a pshore that the Rav should be a misnagid and the Sheikhet should be a chassid. Now, it doesn't mean a Lubavitch a chassid, it means a chassid. That's the Pasha the Pshat in the story, always a chassid. Why is that? Because someone that is a chassid, that learns chassidus, is known to be a chassidus, helps you become a Yerei Shammai. The most important thing of a shaykh is you should have Yerei Shammai, the famous quote in Shulchan Aruch, a shaykh has to have Yerei Shammai, Merabim has to be extra Yerei Shammai. And in order to have a higher level of Yerei Shammai, you have to learn chassidus. And today's day and age, 99% of the population cannot have a high level of Yerei Shammai unless they learn chassidus. And that itself, the Pashtus, he should be learning Hasidus Chabad as well. But that's like a, a Hisof. The Pashtus, it means someone that learns Hasidus is a Yerei Shamayim, and that's a person that you can that you could eat from. Now, since there's an addition that it has to be someone that learns Hasidus Chabad, so it came as a result of that, that there has to be a Lubavitcher Shechita, meaning there has to be a Shechita that's a Lubavitcher. So this way he learned Hasidus Chabad, and this way the Shechita, you know, is from a Shechita that's a Yerei Shamayim Merabim. So it's, you, the goal is to have the Shechita to be on the highest level. Now, living in Postville, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, we know that some of the people here that are not Lubavitchers, and as far as we know, don't necessarily know Hasidus Chabad, are hidden at a big Yerei Shamayim. You didn't wake up every morning very early. They go to mikveh, they say tillim, and they learn, and they daven, and they're not involved in any kind of shtusim. And then you have people that are officially the Babichers, but we don't see them necessarily on the minion on time and learning chassidus and all that. So over here, it doesn't really make sense to say 
that the Lubavitcher Shechita is better than the Nalubavitcher Shechita just because he learned in Tem Chet Mimim. That would, in order to say that, you have to really be Kabbalah sale without Seichel. You have to just say, I don't care, he learned in Tem Chet Mimim, so for sure there's a school is Yerish I see the way he behaves, I'm oblivious to what I see, I know but Paya he learned in Tem Chet Mimim, and that's it. The other guy, he looks like he's a whole tzaddik, I don't care, he did learn Tem Chet Mimim. You have to have a lot of Kabbalah soil for, to believe such a thing, it's hard to do so. However, if someone that's a from a yid, and he's a yirei shemayim, and he learns chassid, and he's a chassidish yid, and you know for a fact, in my opinion, you can eat a shchit. As far as I know, the the Friedrich Rebbe Shoicher was a not lebavicher, and for the tkufe the Rebbe, I think also why some of the shochter were not lebavichers. They were yirei shemayim. But the main thing is to be yirei shemayim. So again, today you have to be yirei shemayim by learning chassidus. So that's required learning chassidus. So that's the thing. Now, really, ideally, the, the best possible way in the past, the way it worked was, whenever you wanted a shech something, you took your chicken to the local sheikh and you saw him shechting it. You knew exactly you shechting your chicken and so to your cow, sheep, goat, whatever it was. But today, when you're buying a chicken on the, in, the, in the market, so the heksher is that it's kosher, but you don't know who the sheikh is. Huh? Advertise my favorite book. Huh? Sheikh favorite book. That was my favorite book for the weeks when I was reading it. I'm very fast up. Now we're on to other favorite books. The Rebbe in Paris. That's now what we're on. Um, I'll call upon him. Huh? No, I haven't had time for that now. I'm too busy now. Uh, like, it's, it's this door is opening and slamming the whole night. I can't focus on anything. Huh? Not yet. That wasn't part of the question. I have to prepare for that. Huh? So, no one gets into the box or anything. He thinks it's sad. I'm English here to take out the things and put it back in again. Oh. I'm not touching anything. Put it in and we can talk about it next time. Um, so, Bukhalifin. So, so uh, uh, see the Shayidin that even when they came to America, they tried doing their best to only eat from their own Shritta or from a Shaykh that know that they know for a fact he's after. <laughs> Ideally, if you really want to be Mahadr, the best Shritta would be that you only give your chickens and your cows, whatever, you only have it shechted by someone that you know who shechted it, and this way you know for sure it's a, it's a chassidish or shaykhit, you give it the chassidish or yid, if you want to have it a lababish or lababish, that learns chassidish, that would be the ideal. But otherwise, you can rely on the fact that it's all kosher, v'yosher, and the yidin that are shechting are probably yirei shamayim, that's v'derech klal, the assumption, that's v'derech klal, how it works, so that's uh, more or less the answer. There isn't uh, any kind of not lebabit shchita. Today they might call it a satmer shchita, other ones, but that was, uh, there's no thing. It means that they shechtim are satmer. There's no there's no changes in the actual processes of the of the of the shchita of the processing. Again, there might be a psaka but some here, a psaka of somebody else over here that are being implemented. But that's like that's not the main thing we talk about. We want the shechtim to be reish mind. That's what we're talking about. The chiddush shchita. Another point is that when Rabashkin started over here. So they had, uh, they always had two lines or even three or four lines of uh, meaning the, they, if you go into the kosher store or any store, you'll see there's what they call uh, Shoyed Habar or they call Aaron's Best. Shoyed Habar and Aaron's Best are produced in the same factory that we have down the block. So how can it be that this is Shoyed Habar Aaron's Best? It depends with the shochtim. So they put different labels on it and uh, you, you won't be shocked to hear that sometimes the labels get mixed up by mistake or whatever. But officially, that's, so what the difference is who the shochtim are. Otherwise, it's all the same thing. So when they started originally, Shaira Bur was the line for the CHK for the Labanat Shit. And 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 uh, what happened was is that Rabashkin asked the Rabonim to put the words Labavit Shit on the packaging. And they said, No, we're not putting the words Labavit Shit. I forget the reasons that they gave, but they didn't put the words Labavit Shit on the packaging. They didn't allow to have that. And then a while later, I think Marvid in Montreal, by them it says Lubavitcher Shechita on their packaging. And the Baskins were upset. Why can't we do the same thing? Why did you let it over there and not over here? I think it might have been from the Rebbe also, but Lavdachka could be just from the Beisden. But that's already so on the packaging, seemingly it's not so, supposed to be that way. As far as I heard from Rabash, almost Rabash, this is years ago. What happens in Marvid or whatever, I don't know how it goes. What? Right. So if it's a CHK thing, it makes sense. But I think it was from the Rebbe, maybe. That's why they were upset. The Russians were upset. How did they get the handle over there? Over there's the the, the, the basin from uh, Montreal. Yeah. Huh? About the Babish's
but that's not connected to Lubavitch. That's a different thing. You have to make this, there's many dinim within the shlachtes and within the processing. But with that, I call today, most shlachtes will take the highest standard. That's what it seems like to me. Question, why can't the shluchim buy me beer? Because the shluchim were told by Anhala not to buy beer for the bachim. Aye, whatever, but they're, so that's, but they're not supposed to. If they're not supposed to buy beer. Beer is one of those things that are a gray area. Beer for itself is kosher. I mean, most beers are kosher. And it's not a problem, it's at kashers. And the etzim, it's not a problem of chsiddish or not chsiddish either. The problem is, why does a bacher want to drink beer? That's the main problem. The derech kal bacher want to drink beer because they want to be tipsy, they want to be wild, or they want to be associated with a certain style which is not kosher. That's the derech kal, the reason that's the derech kal, why it's a problem. And that's not okay. In addition, the Xeda and Mashke, the Rebbe didn't say what percent. I think it's a big stretch to say that there's a Xeda on beer, you can't drink four of uh, Kelich Klach of beer. I think it's a stretch. But the spirit of the Xeda is that people should not be getting drunk. So in Mele, that, in my understanding, it's the same thing. Again, I'm not going to tell a Bacher that had a can of beer, a bottle of beer, that he was Aver on the Xeda. But I would say that he's going against the Rebbe's Kavana of Bacher not behaving this way. Infused ice cream. Theoretically. Like ice cream It's the same idea. We don't drink a hard seltzer. All these kind of things. The pastors of Siddish Abakar shouldn't be touching these things. It's not Beruach Israel Sav. It's not the Rebbe's Kav. The Rebbe's Kav is Bachim should be sober, should not be drinking any kind of alcohol. It's, and the pastors, it's always associated with a wild kind, with a goyish kind. That's where the Rechlau, we all comes from. That's why it's always not acceptable. Is it Be'etzim, Treif, and Aveda? No. If yeshivas will catch you, they kick you out. Most yeshivas won't kick you out. They'll probably give you a big nas, depending on the yeshiva, but they're not going to kick you out. It's not the end of the world. But uh, it's, not, it's not an acceptable behavior for Chassidus Shabbat. What is Chassidus? I'm not sure. The Bach asking Chassidus or Chassidus. I'm not sure. Chassidus or Chassidus? Whatever the case. What is Chassidus? That's the... A kuntus of the Rebbe, kuntus in Yonah Shultedas Achsidus, which the Rebbe goes through all the Svaris. It's a very long sikha, one of the fundamental sikhas, kuntresim of the Rebbe. And that's the place to look. In short, what the Rebbe says over there, Chassidus is Yechida Shebe Torah, the essence of what the Torah is. And uh, it's not so simple on one foot that you can learn that over there and see the answers to the questions. And there's very little questions left in the box. So if you want to continue this, if there's no interest, then you ask any more questions. Joseph. Oh, yeah. Thank you.